So now you can see blank prescription. It looks like this. Uh, you, you can have a different kind of prescription which looks different than this, but the theme will remain the same. So this was the portion I was telling you about. Here you are going to write hospital number, name of the patient and address. Then uh, if you know the ward, for example, it is respiratory ward, it's oncology ward, you can write it down. Otherwise you can leave it alone. And then date of admission, if it's written, you can write it down. Date written. So uh, after that, the next portion would be allergies. So uh, for example, if patient is an aller allergic to penicillin, you can write it down and the type of reaction was rash. So you can write it down here, your name, your signature, and then date. It's very important. And if there is no allergy, there are no allergies, then you can write down NKDA, no known drug allergies. After this, if you can see, this is once only medication part. So if you are going to give some drug for just once only thing, for example, patient was scoring for low blood pressure and you have given a, a bag of fluid, that was a stat bag. So you are going to write it down here. Or if you have given a stat dose of, say, bisoprolol because he was having high blood pressure, which is a one-off reading, and it was indicated, so you can write it down here. It's not a regular medication, right? So you can, if patient needs oxygen, then this is the portion you have to write down everything here. Um, so what is your target saturation? and uh, your signature, name, and everything, and how many times oxygen. For example, if patient is on NIV, so uh, there is a protocol for that, so you are going to fill it out according to that. But if it's not indicated, then just leave it alone. Then comes this antibiotics only section. All the antibiotics are you are going to write down in this portion all the antibiotic. If you have not written it down here, it means it's a wrong prescription and your marks will be deducted. In Not only in GMC, but when you will start your job in NHS, so this prescription writing is going to be very, very helpful for you because you are doing same kind of job in your everyday life. So if it is, if you haven't written in the exam, if you haven't written down it properly your marks will be deducted but in the real life if you have not written it down correctly then patient might miss the rules and it's a uh, patient safety concern and please make sure you have written down as it's here so if you're writing it down then you will have to write down the drug name dose for example 500 milligram root paroral or iv whatever it is started and stopped it Sometimes instead of this start date or stop date, duration of treatment is there. If that is the case, you instead of this box or in addition to this box, duration of treatment is there, then you can write down five days or you can write down seven days, something like this, right? And then here comes your signature, your GMC number and indication. If you are giving, for example, for community acquired pneumonia, then you are going to write it down here. And if there is any additional information, write it down here. If no, then you can leave it. Okay. So now see this thing is coming again in this portion. So it's important that you fill it out again here. Uh, okay. So this portion is the VTE risk assessment form. In all the drug charts in UK, you have this VTE risk assessment. All the patients who are being admitted to the hospital, we do VTE risk assessment. I'm going to cover that in a separate lecture. So just for the time being, uh, because we are just having a look at the drug chart. So VTE assessment and all the anticoagulants, heparin, deltaparin, noxaparin, um, warfarin, Pixaban, all the things will come on this portion. So, so you can see that Delta Perrin is written already. So if you are going to prescribe Delta Perrin, you can write it down here. You don't have to write it down here. If it's already written, the name is already written, you can just prescribe. But if you are, for example, going to prescribe a Pixaban, so 
you can write it down here. But sometimes in the exam, you will not have any anticoagulant section uh, in your drug chart. If you have, well and good. If you don't have, then you can write down these blood thinners in the regular portion of the drug chart because this is going to be uh, either a long-term medication or for a period of three to six months because this is the most commonly asked question. If there is no anticoagulant portion, then you can write it down in the regular portion. After that comes regular portion of the drug chart. All the regular drugs will go here, whether it's metformin, whether it's uh, uh, some blood pressure medication, whatever it is, statins, all these will go here. And then comes as required portion. So as required portion is, for example, if you are writing solbutamol, then you can write it down here. Any other medication, for example, sometimes we write some additional painkillers for the patient. So all those things that are not regular, they will they will come in this portion. And whether to give it as regular or whether to give it as PRN or as required portion, it will be given in your task. And then this chart, this is also another most commonly asked question, anticoagulant treatment chart. So as you know that it's showing INR and stuff, and we know that only warfarin needs INR monitoring. So if you are giving warfarin, then you are going to use this chart. Otherwise, anticoagulant treatment will be coming to the other portion I have shown you already, right? You will be writing it down there, not here. If it's warfarin, because we are going to adjust the dose according to INR, you are going to write warfarin here. For the other anti um, um, anticoagulants, you are going to write in the other portion I have already shown. Or if there is no anticoagulant portion, then you are going to write it down in the regular portion. So let's have a look at this task, which is mentioning about patient details and everything. You can... You can fill it out in your prescription blank form, or name, date of birth, hospital number, NHS number, address, allergy, and comorbidities are also written here. So this is the patient info portion. If you can write it down, and if there are stickers, you can just put the stickers in the uh, column. And this portion, don't forget to fill it out. Our first task is, you are FY2 working in OBG. Mrs. Emma Mill, 37 year old, has presented at 34 week of gestation with premature rupture of membrane. Your registrar is with the patient and asks you to write a prescription for her. And prescription is dexamethasone, 10 milligram, erythromycin 250. Regular meds are also written here. So from this chart, from this task, you know that regular meds, there is no doubt, they will go in the regular portion of the drug chart. Penicillin allergic, you know that where to write it down. Erythromycin, it's an antibiotic, so it will go in the antibiotic column. And now comes this dexamethasone. So now the question is whether it will go in the regular portion or where it's going to go. So this dexamethasone is not regular. If you see the protocol of the treatment, especially when you are giving steroids, IV steroids, they are usually given for a very short time. And if they need further steroid, then we are going to write down prednisolone and we are going to stop IV steroids. So we need to be careful with IV steroid. And especially as a junior doctor, you are not going to prescribe it. So anyways, dexamethasone will be coming in once only section not in regular section, it's important. And look at this 12 hourly, right? So dose is 10 milligram, 12 hourly IM. So 12 hourly can be there or in your exam, they can make it as 24 hourly. Your task says 12 hourly or 24 hourly. So whatever it says, you have to write it down as it is. So if just, uh, quick look at preterm rupture of membrane. So it's a rupture of membrane beyond, so before 37 week of gestation. 
management is first you have to stabilize do initial assessment examination and everything antibiotic prophylaxis and then in antibiotic prophylaxis we have different options we can give them oral penicillin but since our patient is allergic to penicillin other option is erythromycin which is written in the task or if you can't give erythromycin due to any reason then next option is clindamycin for 10 days and uh, or when when women is in established labor whichever is sooner okay either for 10 days or until labor and then steroids between 24 plus to 33 plus 6 week you are going to give steroids duration is decided by the consultant and only a registrar which is st5 or above can decide about steroids so it's beyond your scope just have to write it down and then monitoring and induction of the labor will be further uh, management of this. So now you are writing down the drug chart. Um, dexamethasone, you know that you are giving dexamethasone. So all it's very important for you to check interaction before prescribing because if you have prescribed and somebody has given the medication to the patient and if there were some interactions, then who is going to be responsible for that? Obviously you. So when you are prescribing, uh, check the interactions. So uh, this is BNF. In your exam, there will be BNF in all the stations. Um, there is a way to read BNF. So either uh, now we are checking drug interactions, right? First is drug interaction. And second thing is that you can check the indications as well. For example, if you want to check indications for UTI, what you can do is you can go in the genitourinary system 818 and you can look for UTI and then in UTI you are going to find the treatment. Another thing is that uh, you are going to go in the index and index you can find out UTI and then you can look for UTI on that particular page. So these are two different methods of doing that. Now we have uh, P, uh, BNF you can find on Google as well, like when you are working clinically. And also there is an app as well, BNF app. You can keep that in your phone for a quick look. Um, but in the exam, unfortunately, there will be books. So you have to use BNF. So first thing was how to look for the um, Re, uh, appropriate treatment. So you can go in the system. For example, if you have this system for the first time in your exam, uh, this from you got this for the first time in your exam, then you can go to uh, GIT, cardiovascular nervous infection, genital urinary. Probably you will find it here and then uh, go in the labor and then from there you can, you are going to find out the right drug. So, or if you are looking for UTI, you can find it out. Okay. Other thing is that uh, interactions. So whatever you are prescribing, you need to find the interaction. So open this portion. Page number is written here. Go to 14444 and look for D, uh, dexamethasone. For example, if you are trying to find the interaction between dexamethasone and erythromycin, so there is an interaction. You can open any one of them. or It's better to open dexamethasone so that you can check for both erythromycin and another drug was clindamycin, right? Penicillin we can't, we can't give because patient is allergic. Other two options are erythromycin or clindamycin. So open dexamethasone and check if there are any interactions with erythromycin. Yes, there are. So don't give it. Check for an interaction between clindamycin and dexamethasone. So there are no interactions. So this is a safe drug to prescribe. And next thing will be, what is the dose of clindamycin? For exam purpose, um, it will be great if you know important doses. Otherwise, you can always look into BNF for the dose, right? Because you are having very less time. So if you know the doses, it will be easier for you. And just to be on safe side, you can just uh, quickly the correct dose so that you are writing it down correctly. And please make it a habit to open BNF while you are writing prescription writing so that in, in your exam, you are not in any trouble. You can just quickly check it. Okay. So you can see that the drugs are written, all the drugs are written here. So go to 
clindamycin C and then look for clindamycin and then open the page and on the page you can find out the right dose. So if you see how I have filled out my prescription, you can just see that all names and details and everything is written here. Your name and signature will come here, date here. Dexamethasone, as we already discussed, will go on once only, once only, because two doses you have to prescribe, so you can prescribe it like this. So 12 hourly, so first time is, for example, 10, then after that, after giving and give a gap of 12 hours, and then next dose, you can prescribe it around uh, 10 in the night time. And then your prescription, uh, your signature and your GMC number. Clindamycin dose comes out to be 600 milligram per oral or IV. If patient can tolerate orally, then you can give oral. If patient is unwell, then you can give IV. So it is written, clindamycin is given as BD. So if dose is written, then you can write BD. But here in this description, dose is not being mentioned. So you can just write down so what you have to do write down the dates and write down the timings so it should be given 12 hourly apart right so bd dose means you have to give it 12 hourly apart so for example if you are giving eight in the morning and eight in the evening it should be okay nine in the morning nine in the evening should be okay as well time doesn't matter patient is coming to you at four o'clock um yeah in the morning then obviously you will give it at that time you will not wait for eight o'clock so whatever time you want to write write it down but make sure it is 12 hours apart when you are giving next dose okay and duration was 10 days if you can if you remember from the task so then comes metformin so in metformin it was written 500 milligram bd so again morning and evening and uh, and then calcium will be evening and then date is written here if all your medications are to be started from same time for the same date then you don't have to repeat right this date writing with each and every drug you can just write this date in the start like this and after that, you can just write down drug names and circle morning and evening if it is given for two times. And if it is for one only, once only medication, then you can circle it only one, once. So you don't have to write down date every time when you are giving the drug. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I will cover the next prescription in next video. Thank you.